Yes. Well, welcome to God is in the house. And na, 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 na. were you dancing with that? Well, I sent that out on Facebook, uh, so you should have it. If you if you need it, just uh, inbox me or whatever. Isn't that a nice song? That it's called the Song of Hanukkah, Song of, Song of Festival of Lights, Song of uh, Festival of Dedication, uh, Song of Festival or Feast of Miracles, Time of Miracles. So that's the time we're in right now, and miracles and that type of thing. So I had sent out a, a, um, on Facebook what we're going to be talking about tonight in 5781. And it says, the Father speaks. And it, and I and again, I said John 12, 26, and I, and I had shared that with you. In other words, the Father speaks. In other words, serve my son. That is what the Father is speaking right now. Serve my son, Jesus, Yeshua. And you can read the scripture. It says, where my servant is, so shall I also be says the Lord. So it's it's a good it's it's good to be one as it says in, in John 17 where the Jesus says uh, the Father wants to be one with us and this is one with the Father and we want we want to be one together. So that's part of uh, I said that we'd be live streaming tonight. And where I'm gonna end later on before we go it is like I, I'm going to what I wrote on there was it the time to be crushed and to be submitted and to serve. So in serving, there is a crushing that goes on. And you know, the olive, the olive is uh, something that is crushed. It is something that, uh, you know, you, you have to put pressure upon it to get the oil out, <laughs> anointing oil. But the, the olive oil and the first run of the virgin olive oil in the anointing oil that you find in Exodus chapter uh, 30, um, that's the character of God. And uh, so when you're being squashed by God, the character of God uh, is part of And I, I'm going to go through that, that in a bit. But um, so what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? So we're, we're going to um, stick with the focus in, in the book of John. And we're going to be going around to different other different things as well. But uh, let's go to John chapter um, chapter 10. Now, this is an interesting time. You know, what would Jesus do? And in John chapter 10, it's all about the good shepherd. Ah, you know, when, when you read through John chapter 10, it's uh, Jehovah Rohi, uh, the Lord thy shepherd. And, you know, God wants to raise us. Jesus, you know, this is the march for Jesus here. Um, God wants to raise up those uh, bell sheep that others would follow is, is, you know, is what this time is. There's a great time of being prepared right now for the greatest harvest that's going to come, that is coming. So when, when you look in John ch chapter 10, it's talking about Yeshua, the true shepherd. And in verse 1 it says, Most assuredly I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door or by the gate... Hmm. So there's a gate, there's a door, or the eye of the needle that is translated that way. In other words, who entered the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up by some other way, is the same is as a thief or a robber. So if you're trying to uh, get in uh, to God's good graces by not going through the door, and, he, and it says in Revelations that he's at the door and he knocks and he's, he's wanting you to open it, but you know, you need to go through the sheep gate. You need to go through the door that God is knocking at right now. And you need to bow down at the eye of the needle and bow down and go through into his presence. That's what this time is all about. But he who enters the door, but he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. So first of all, he's saying the one that comes through the door first is the shepherd of the sheep. So he's coming through that gateway to lead us. Um, and we need to know that uh, if you go to our website, it says we follow Jesus and we're about the father's business. So when Jesus looked right into the eyes of the disciples, the first one, he says, he didn't say much. He just said, follow me. Uh, what would Jesus do? Or what would you do with Jesus came to you and said, follow me. Hmm. I guess of the spirit of the living God, they just dropped everything and then followed him. 
So let's just think about that in going into this. And, and to him by, to him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. So he knows each and every one of your names. I don't know if you can interpret that, but uh, he knows my name. And my name is Raymond. Uh, and Raymond means kingly warrior. And that name was given to me by my parents and they had no idea what it meant. But there's another name written upon me that's probably Hebrew that means something close to it. I don't know. Well, one day I'll, we'll find out what, he, what name he's written on each and every one of our hearts. Okay? So, all right. So let's continue with this. Uh, and, he, and when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him. Are you following Jesus? Or are you running around in other rocks or crags? Or are you hanging out in slew water? Or are you hanging out with the goats? Or do you just like to be like, uh, put on wolf's clothing and be, uh, pretend that you're a wolf? Oh, is this, pretend you're a sheep? No, they're a sheep pretending that they're a wolf. They're trying to be somebody they're not. The wolf can put, the wolf can put on sheep's clothing and come in and sneak and be uh, what you might call a, what you, a counterfeit. But as sheep, we got to be sheep. We can't put on somebody else's clothing and try to be somebody else. Huh, interesting, eh? Okay, so then it, then it says, follow him, and he, uh, because they know his voice. Yet they will, yet by, the, by no means follow a stranger. They won't follow a stranger. Hmm. But will flee from him if they do not know the voice of, wow. Love strange. I want you to know, um, Dougie's like that. You know, he doesn't follow. He, he won't follow you. He, he wants. He follows somebody he knows. And I think our, our our grandkids are like that, and our kids are that way because they've been brought that way. They 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 know the voice of the father, and they know mama's voice. They don't know these other voices. They're not going to follow. Make sense? Okay. So you, um, so Jesus used this illustration. But they did not understand the things in which he spoke to them. Because he was using an illustration or a life application study to the people at that time. Everybody knew about sheep and sheep herders and that type of thing. So he was trying to explain that there are some bad hirelings that are trying to steal the sheep and not going through the right gates. Is that you? Are you, try are you, are you trying to get to heaven the wrong way? Wow. There's only one way to get to heaven. There's only one way to be in the presence of God. And that is to invite the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart and really mean it in a place of worship. And we're going to go again, John chapter 4, 22 to 24. So let's go a little further here. And, and this is Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves. So, okay, so there's false, false gods. There are a bunch of false religions and false gods out there and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. Well, that's verse 9. And will go in and out and find pasture. Verse 10, and then it says, The thief does not come except to steal and to kill. Wow. That means those false prophets, those false religions, the devil or whatever they are, they all they want to do is come and kill and destroy. And I have come that they, and he says, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So who's the they? Well, all the sheep, obviously, and any of those guys that want to repent. Do you need to repent? Have you been doing things the wrong way through your own door? A sheep gate? Anyway, okay. Then it says in verse 12, he says, in verse 10, it says, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Okay, so he's talking about resurrection life. He's going to give his, his life for the sheep. And then verse 12, okay, then he comes back, oh, oh, the hirelings, but a hireling is he, what do you have in, what, in verse 12? Do you have any, anything different there, honey? We won't turn no, over to her, but do you, what do we have for hireling over there in something? The worker. The worker. The worker who serves only for wages is not oh, a real shepherd. Oh, just for money. Mm -hmm. Oh, philanthropist? Would that be? I don't know. No, I don't know if that's right. Word, I don't know if that's right either, because philanthropists they can do it for God, right? They can do it for the right thing. They can, you know. Well, yeah, whoever it is, they're not the real deal. Ah, okay. 
So it's the real deal we need. Yep. Okay, the real deal. Okay, so we'll keep on going. So the hireling, he who, he who is not the shepherd, one who does for his own, he just wants to do it for his own self and uh, make a profit off the sheep. And when he sees the wolf coming and he just leaves the sheep to save himself and he flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. Does not. He doesn't even have a vested interest in the sheep because he, he'll just slip back another way and make a lie or whatever uh, in regards to how the, how the wolf got in there. But it says in 14, I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and I am, and I am known by my own. I am known by my own. That's a good song. I am known by my own. Philippians 3.10, that you know him in the power of the resurrection, in the fellowship of his suffering, and that you love not your lives until your death. Okay. So, uh, verse 14 and 15 in this version says, I alone am the good shepherd, and I know those whose hearts are mine. Mm. For they recognize me and know me, just as my father knows my heart, and I know my father's heart. I am ready to give my life for the sheep. Do 16 as well. And I have other sheep that I will gather which are not of this Jewish flock. And I, their shepherd, must lead, lead them too. And huh. they will follow me and listen to my voice. <laughs> and I will join them all into one flock with one shepherd. Ah. Pretty cool, actually. Yeshua HaMashiach. Yeah. Messianic so, well, flock. The way. Well, and, and both Jew and Gentile. Right, that's right. So, so he is the shepherd of both. He's the shepherd, and he brings us all together as one. And that's the idea of the unity in the ecclesia and the body of Christ. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, we're gonna. I'm gonna move that thing over. I'm gonna stretch over, and I'm gonna move it to Leslie. Okay. Okay, move it. Oh, there we got it. Do, do that one again with the Exia. That's a good one. Oh, I just threw that in my. I head. know you did, so, <laughs> but that was that was profound. Okay, um, so yeah, well, verse fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen then, and this is the Passion Translation. So it says, "I alone am the good shepherd, and I know those whose hearts are mine, for they recognize me and know me, just as my Father knows my heart." And I know my father's heart. I am ready to give my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that I will gather which are not of this Jewish flock. And I, their shepherd, must lead them too. And they will follow me and listen to my voice. And I will join them all into one flock with one shepherd. Does that sound like John 17? And the you know, yes. Lord make them one as we are one. Right? Yes. <clears throat> and one of the things I taught last week... You know, is uh, just stay. I'm gonna keep the camera on you, um, but you, it's important when you read Second Timothy, chapter one, verse seven. I have not given you a spirit of timidity, mm. okay, or or, or a fear. I, I've given you what? I have given you power, to, power in, as heaven. one. We are all one in the power and the authority of who we are in, in Adonai Elohim, right? And the power of the blood. And then I've given you what? Unconditional love. I've given you power and love. Uh, you know, the love of the Father. And I have given you what? Sound mind. A sound mind. Mm -hmm. But that's translated in where it, it, it's, it's called the, uh, the mindset of Messiah. Mm -hmm. So I've given you the mindset of Messiah so that we can be one in the power and in the love and in the covenant so that we will have a holy reverent fear and awe of God but not fear of man so you think like Jesus thinks absolutely that's his word. mindset of the Messiah yeah. to be one that's why behold the Lamb of God who comes to take away the sins of the world yeah. behold the Lamb of God Yeshua HaMashiach yeah. the Messiah yeah who comes to take away the sin mm -hmm. of the world. And that world is goyim. That's all sin. All, it, it, anybody that's all unworthy. Humans. All humans. All humans. So with that, that brings us right where we want to be. 
So in verse 22 to 30, this is all about the festival of dedication where Jesus at this time, this is mm. the specific time and stay, stay on Leslie. This is the specific time and place. Mm -hmm. What? Oh, yeah, you're going to stay with me, right? Yeah, you're going to yeah. read this. Okay. So I, all I'm saying is this is this is all the planets lining, lining up right now. The festival of dedication, the festival of lights, the yes. festival of miracles. Festival this is of, the feast of renewal. The feast of renewal. The everything's happening now. This is the last day of Hanukkah. Yeah. Festival of lights, and we're going into the vet. To vet. Okay? okay. So, so go ahead. Just read, read what Jesus said and what he did at this time when he was on this earth. Wow. Alrighty. So starting in verse 22 then of uh, John chapter 10. And Sorry. this again is the Passion Translation. And it's, the subtitle here is Jesus at the, fest, at the Feast of Renewal. So the time came to observe the winter feast of renewal in Jerusalem. Jesus walked into the temple area under Solomon's covered walkway when the Jewish leaders encircled him and said, how much longer will you keep us in suspense? Tell us the truth and clarify this once and for all for us. Are you really the Messiah, the Anointed One? And Jesus answered them, I have told you the truth already and you did not believe me. The proof of who I am is revealed by all the miracles that I do in the name of my Father. Yet you stubbornly refuse to follow me because you are not my sheep. As I've told you before, so how many times does he have to tell these people? Anyway, as I've told you before, my own sheep will hear my voice, and I know each one, and they will follow me. I give to them the gift of eternal life, and they will never be lost, and no one, no one has the power to snatch them out of my hands. My Father, who has given them to me as his gift, is the mightiest of all, and no one has the power to snatch them from my Father's care. The Father and I are one. Wow. Boy, are we in good hands or what? So when they heard this, the Jewish leaders were so enraged that they picked up rocks to stone him to death. But Jesus said, My Father has empowered me to work many miracles and acts of mercy among you. So which one of you, or which one of them, do you want to stone me for? So it's the time of miracles, the feast of renewal, the feast, you know, festival of lights. miracles and lights, and um, yeah, and the festival of dedication. So, um, I, I, this is so exciting right now because um, Jesus. He's crying this out like uh, when we read about uh, uh, cry, that voice crying out of the wilderness. Well, Jesus, the, first of all, it was Isaiah that did that. And then it was John the Baptist. Then Jesus. Now we're supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. So I, I just want to line this up out of Isaiah 58. Stay, stay, uh, stay with Leslie right now. Oh, you want to? I'm gonna stay with you on top. Of you. Okay. Isaiah we're 58. To... We're gonna go there just right now, okay. because I, I want them to understand what this month of Tevet is all about. Because the month of Tevet is the month of glory. This is this is the month of glory. This is the month uh, what we're going into right now, where the manifested presence of the heaviness of the wealth of all heaven is coming down upon us, and that and the devil is getting squished out by the wealth of God. And we just got to receive. He's he's pouring it upon on the just and the unjust. But those who are the just and the righteous, it says the righteous shall run into the strong tower, as Proverbs uh, uh, eighteen ten. I, I talked about that last week. So the righteous shall run in, and they shall be safe. So let's just look how this how this all comes together in Isaiah. Um, I got one here. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, the boss, the little four legged one. Yeah, he's asking for cookies. So anyway, Isaiah fifty-eight. Yeah, and, and I, I just want you to read uh, like verse eight, and just read the, like eight and nine. Okay, all right. Then my favor will bathe you in sunlight, until you are like the dawn bursting forth through a dark night, and then suddenly your healing will manifest. 
That's good news. Suddenly your healing will manifest. For those of you who need healing, grab a hold of that one. You will see righteousness march out before you. And the glory of Yahweh will protect you from all harm. Verse 9, and then Yahweh will answer you when you pray. When you cry out for help, he will say, I am here. If you banish every form of oppression, the scornful accusations, and vicious slander, and if you offer yourselves in compassion for the hungry and relieve those in misery, then your dawning light will rise in the darkness and your gloom will turn into noonday splendor. Keep going. Verse 11. Right to 12. Okay. Um, Yahweh will always guide you where to go and what to do. So you, you want to know, Lord, what do I do next? Well, his word tells us, and we need to grab a hold of his word. It's true. Yahweh will always guide you where to go and what to do. He will fill you with refreshment. If you're yeah. like you're down a pint, I know I have been. And even when you are in a dry and difficult place, and this time that we live in right now is a dry and difficult place, he will continually restore strength to you so you will flourish like a well-watered garden and like an ever-flowing, trustworthy spring of blessing. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, and, and keep going in 12. So Kislev mm -hmm. was all about that spring of living water that was in, like last month. So this is this Isaiah 58 is it's just so awesome the way it flows together from the spring of living water and the righteousness and, and then the glory carriers how the glory comes and, and how the glory is the rear guard. So let's just remember that. So re read 12, 12 please. Mm -hmm. um, your people will rebuild long deserted ruins. Are we got ruins right now that we need to rebuild? Well, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of ruins in people's lives. Amen. And the Lord, with God's help, these ruins can be rebuilt. Amen. Your people will rebuild long deserted ruins building a new on foundations laid long before uh, you. You will be known as repairers of the cities. Amen. And Hallelujah. Re and restorers of communities. Hallelujah. So, and I think probably in other versions that just might say repairs of the gap or of the breach. Of the breach, yeah. And, and restorers of the streets that we dwell yeah. in. Yeah. And this version says the restorers of communities. That is so awesome. I'm just going to... Uh, bring the camera over to me here okay ah oh, there we go so can you not see from kislev the springs of living water and passing over and hanukkah and all those guys dancing in the river that i showed you the picture of and the celebration of the festival of lights but that's the place of dedication but also the place of miracles and and that was being talked about there in isaiah 58 verses uh uh i think it's eight nine and ten there too so um the exciting part of what's happening here in verse 30 uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Isaiah, I, I, my notes kind of flipped on me here, but Isaiah chapter 30, you, you know, pardon me, on John chapter 30 here, that brings us to another segue, or what would Jesus do here? You know, um, what would Jesus do um, in regards to John chapter, 30. John chapter uh, pardon me, going back, John chapter 10, yeah. uh, verses uh, 22 to 30. What would Jesus do here? Well, he knows, he knows the sheep, and the sheep should know him, okay? And he's, he's looking for this preparation age, preparation holiness, uh, preparation humility, preparation being set apart in holiness, but he's looking for this preparation preparation of us coming into the greatest harvest the greatest harvest that we would be one with the father that's what's the harvest time so you know you're going from kislev to tevet which is mean the glory carriers or the month of glory and it's 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 like wow this is such a promise that god has given us this is the time in history when the ark landed and was on mount ararat and, every, and all everything was coming out for life, okay? And the promise of the, of the of what? The rainbow, when, my promise will always be there for you and I shall never come and destroy you again or, or any living creature. 
Okay, so this COVID-19, all right, it's, it's, we'll get through it because God's promises, but we need to come to a place and plan and be in the preparation of war to keep the promises of God in our life. We can't let the enemy steal it. We need to be in a place of preparation for not only holiness, but harvest, but also we need to be in that place so that we can be in a place of protection and, and, that, and warfare and worship. So uh, if one of the things about the, the, the preparation of dedication, 165 years BC, that's when the Greeks had conquered uh, Israel and they had no hope. Uh, everything was being taken away from them all life and uh they but they wanted freedom and they fought for freedom so jesus was the shadow and the tight of the light for freedom and when jesus when jesus came in and, and the mountain like as far as the triumphal entry into into uh uh jerusalem you know they, they were saying jose on the highest and we're going to go there in a sec they were worshiping him but they thought he was going to be the king of israel and he was going to take out the enemy by force and that's what they wanted man 666 or the man is the number six that he want they wanted jesus to be their king and take out the romans by force the same way the greeks were taken out by force by the maccabees at the same time interesting right so okay i want you to get this because there, there's a uh, jesus wasn't going to do it the same way as the maccabees he wasn't going to come in and destroy but that's what they that's what the uh that's what the Jews wanted. That's what the zealots wanted. And Jesus was going to do it his way, heaven's way. Preparation heaven. He, he, is not, he was not going to do it man's way. Not going to happen. And he's not going to do it your way. He's going to do it his way. Please get this straight. His way. Preparation him. Hosea on the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna on the highest. You know, that worship was down on the ice. So we're going to go to there. But I just wanted you to get this because if, if we turn quickly to Second Chronicles uh, chapter, Second uh, Chronicles, I wrote it in my notes here. Just let me find it. Second Chronicles, uh, oh yeah, chapter 12, uh, verses 7 to 9. Okay, this, because this is this, the same words that the, 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 that the, the priest of the Maccabees said when they, when they conquered the Greeks. But he, he, they had, it was just changed a little bit. So when Paul said this, he said it in regards to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? All right, when we read this. But this same scripture was used by the uh, priest of the Maccabees in regards to lifting themselves up in regards to conquering the Greeks and also giving glory to Abba Father, okay? They gave glory to God, but they were giving glory to their defeat of how they did it by war and by the sword, all right? To defeat the Greeks. But Jesus did it differently. So how, how does that read? You know, Second Chronicles chapter? Second Chronicles chapter 12, verses 7 to 9. And the, and the focus one is 9. So if you can read that, I'm going to okay. get it as well. Okay. I got it here. Okay, so in Second Chronicles chapter 12. And what would Jesus do? And it's called the thorn in my flesh. That's what Paul is saying, the thorn in my flesh. Yeah. Um, and so it's the eternal one speaking here. It says, because you have humbled yourselves, I will not destroy you. I will save Jerusalem from my wrath to be administered by Shishak. Okay, just a minute. So... Uh, the Maccabees said the same thing. <laughs> they said the same thing when they conquered Jerusalem. Okay? Okay, say, say it again. Okay, verse 7. Yeah. Because you have humbled yourselves, I will not destroy you. I will save Jerusalem from my wrath to be administered by Shashak. But you will serve him since you no longer serve me. And you will remember the pain of serving foreign kings and long for the ease of serving me. Yep. Then Shishak, the king of Egypt, attacked Jerusalem and plundered the Eternal's temple and the palace of the king. He took every treasure, including Solomon's golden shields. To replace his father... Are you in Second Corinthians chapter... No, you said Second Chronicles. Oh, I'm sorry. 
second I'm sorry Corinthians uh yeah, I was, it, it, was, it was a good read. I didn't want to stop you. So, yeah, uh, I mean, Second it, Chronicles it, seven. It, it, it kind of it, it is. A it good it read. kind of fits right in. Well, it fits in with the times we live in. Yeah, it's it's. I'm, <laughs> I'm going. I'm saying, boy, that's a good translation. But okay, <laughs> keep keep her going. Anyway, so you want Second yeah. Corinthians? Yeah, but is it, what else does it say there? Well, see, it, it's kind of fitting right for our time at the moment in the sense that. Let me let me put it over there. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Okay. Boy, oh boy, your rubber arm is growing. Yeah, I'm stretching my shoulder up. I'm going to need a massage tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, but the thing is, okay, so there's, there's, there's a time, you know, there's a time and where the Lord has given, you know, he's, he's, he's truly a God that, who is just. And right, and so even though the people have kind of messed up over the years, and in verse six they 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 said they said that the, from somebody like the leaders like Rehoboam and the governors that it, humbling themselves, the eternal's punishment of us is just. In this day and age, how many leaders, governments, whether in the North American platform or abroad anywhere would say that the eternal's punishment of us is just and then but obviously you know they they took a humble approach you know if my people who are called by my name so if they were called by God's name and they took the more humble approach but then the, the Lord still has a consequence he's just because there was some stuff that wasn't it wasn't good because you have humbled yourselves so he's had mercy here I will not destroy you so if the leaders of our land would humble themselves and the people of God would yeah. humble themselves then perhaps our countries would be spared whether it's the United States whether it's Canada mm -hmm. whether it's any country in this globe and we would be spared his wrath not that he is a god who's going to smack us around but there's there's consequences for actions and for not serving him so it, and it says so i will not destroy you i will save you i will save jerusalem to be and but there will be um i will save jerusalem from my wrath and this is to be administered by another guy another leader i assume I don't know if she shot from a hole in the ground, but you know God does. So, but He's you Egyptian will... king. Yeah. Okay, there you go. That's right, king of Egypt. It says so down below. Um, I will not destroy you, um, but you will serve him since you no longer serve me. Mm -hmm. So, if those who have served God in the past turn away and are serving no matter what, whether it's whether it's their own pride, whether it's mammon, whether it's whatever, the other idols in, in their lives. So since you will serve him, since you no longer serve me, and you will remember the pain of serving foreign kings and long for the ease of serving me. So much easier and simpler if we yeah. would just serve the Lord. Amen. And so that you know, kind of speaks of a time that we're in Yeah, mom at this moment. Anyway, so now we'll go over to 2 Corinthians. Yeah, uh, second, yeah sec 2 Corinthians okay. chapter 12, 7 to 9. So uh, keep the, we'll keep the camera on Leslie. But this okay. is all about uh, Paul uh, talking about uh, the situation, but paraphrasing what the Maccabees priests said so that they would understand it's a similar situation as what happened in the Feast of Dedication, the Feast of Miracles, and so on. But he just changed the words a little bit in regards to, uh, and, and, and you'll see in a minute how the righteousness and the glory comes together here. Okay. Okay, so verses 7 to 9? Yeah. Um, so, to keep me grounded and stop me from becoming too high and mighty due to the extraordinary... Character of Isn't that like you know, interesting about the Egyptian king and everything else, mm -hmm. way back there in Second Chronicles seven, and how this is in Second uh, yeah, Corinthians 
12, where Paul is being so, so humble before God, but speaking the same thing in regards to freedom. Um, so to keep me grounded and stop me from becoming too high and mighty due to the extraordinary character of these revelations, I was given a thorn in the flesh, a nagging nuisance of Satan, a messenger to plague me. I wonder if this COVID-19 is a pain in the butt in our flesh. Well, it's a plague nonetheless. Oh, is it a pain um, in the butt? It may be. Okay. I begged the Lord three times to liberate me from its anguish. And finally, he said to me, my grace is enough to cover and sustain you. My power is made perfect in weakness. So, so, I, so I just want you to know, mm -hmm. just two words are changed in this particular writing here that Paul said, but that the priest from the Maccabees said. Okay. So that Paul was uh, speaking what the Maccabees said, but he turned it just three degrees onto Jesus and off the three degrees that was going uh, uh, to man in regards to their strength that mm. conquered the Greeks. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I beg... No, where are we? My, Start nine again. Okay. My grace. Okay. So, my grace is enough to cover and sustain yeah. you. My power is made perfect in weakness. So, ask me about my thorn. Inquire about my weaknesses. And I will gladly go on and on. I would rather stake my claim in these and have the power of the anointed one at home within me. I am at peace and even take pleasure in any weaknesses, any insults, any hardships, any persecution. Okay, do we take pleasure in these things? Do we? Like, hmm. What would Jesus do? And so... You know, I mean, Paul is giving us a pretty good role model example. Exactly. That I am at peace and even take pleasure in any weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and afflictions. Why? For the sake of the anointed. Ah. Because when I am at my weakest, he makes me strong. Mm. When I am at my weakness, he makes me strong. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Okay. That that is so cool. That is so cool. So we're in the month of Tibet, which is okay. Again, the month of just keep it on. Well, keep it on Leslie for a bit because we're coming into a close here. Our first close anyway. And in, <laughs> in, in regards to the feast of dedication, so we can see that based on the feast of dedication, uh, when Paul was saying those words in Second Chronicles uh, chapter twelve, verse nine. Those are the same words of dedication that was say, said by the priest of the, uh, the Maccabees mm. after they had they changed two words and, and, and changed it around a little bit. But it was still that dedication. But it was still a festival of lights because th th that was because uh, they only had uh, enough oil to burn for one day and it burned for eight days. Mm -hmm. In other words, Jesus came through through the turf, most difficult time. Even though uh, the Greeks were a pain or, or a thorn in their flesh, uh, they, didn't, they, they were taken out, even though they were doing abominations of, of pigs and the sacrifice in the altar of God. Abominations. But God still came through. Uh, but they took it out by force. And when Jesus came in his triumphal entry, that's what they were wanting, is the same thing that the Maccabees did 165 years ago. 165 years previously, uh, they wanted they wanted the same type of war um, to happen where they could they could beat the Romans at the same way as the Maccabees beat, Maccabees beat the Greeks. Okay, so isn't that cool? The, the, the dedication. So when you saw those little guys dancing, da 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 da, all eight. Okay, so they had eight days of oil of the anointing of God, and they only had one what? They only had one, one candle. One, but they only had one serving. But God multiplied it so much, mm -hmm. it was enough for ever, right till today. We're still, we're still, still sat up celebrating the place of dedication. When are we going to get on our knees, it says in Second Chronicles chapter 7, 14, uh, as far as that place of dedication? Mm -hmm. So that comes back to the Maccabees again in this whole thing uh, of the righteousness go in and the glory be in the rear guard. Because this is the month of Dan. And the month of Dan, they were the rear guard of the 12 tribes. But they, they, could, they could run like leopards. 
They were so fast. It didn't matter where the enemy came. The Lion of Judah was at the front. The tribe of Dan was at the back. And it didn't matter where the enemy attacked. The glory, which was the rear guard, could meet the enemy at any place, at any place, at all 12 tribes. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Isn't that cool? You, you can't see me right now because I'm behind the camera. But I want you to know, Leslie, I'm excited about this. Okay, so let's look at the triumphal entry right now. Okay, okay the triumphal, triumphal entry, there's whole many, so many different scriptures, and this is where we're going we're gonna to bring this to an kind of an end or a start <laughs> you know this is the second close is it the second what close you mean we had the first one yeah it was kind of like the first one okay. so let's go to john back to john 12 uh back to john okay okay uh i know i know i know john chapter 12 okay are we at john 12 no we're getting there okay so <coughs> john chapter 12 mm -hmm. we we read um, I says, and I and my father are one. Okay, John so chapter yeah, and we read that in uh, pardon me uh, in ten. So if we go to twelve, mm -hmm. and we flip that over, and we look, I, I, I got my notes. John chapter twelve, verses twelve to fifteen. Okay, okay. So here is the triumphal entry, and it says that, uh, in verse twelve it says, the next day the great multitude that had come to the feast, another feast. Okay, this is interesting. When they heard Yeshua was coming to Jerusalem, they took branches and palm trees and went out to meet him, and they cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. In other words, they wanted to, they wanted to kick the Romans out the same way as the Greeks. The King of Israel. Is that what you got? What have you got? In verse 12. In verse 12, it says, then the next day, a great crowd of people who had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they gathered branches of palm trees to wave as they celebrated his arrival. Okay, I want you to know they did the same thing in the Maccabees. They brought those same things in for victory. Once they once they won, they had won it. They brought the the, the same palm leaves mm -hmm. into in to clean the temple. They okay. brought them in and to clean the temple. Mm -hmm. It's 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 a religious item for. For a Hosanna, but also cleaning. They cleaned up the temple of all the of, of all the bad stuff that was in there because of the Greeks. So way the, back when. When so then come forward to John twelve, the waving of the palm trees was more of a celebration. The celebration of freedom that they were celebrating in advance because they knew that Jesus was maybe going to do the same thing that the Maccabees did. They were calling him king to kick the Romans out, but he was going oh, to do it a different okay, way. Okay. Okay. And in their mind, man wanted it done. They wanted it done the same way as it was done in the Maccabees. Okay. So, okay. So you go a little further, and this is so cool. This is such a revelation here. I am so excited. Okay. Hosanna, preparation H. Okay. Preparation Hosanna. What does that mean? The holy of holies, right? Like I mean, they're 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 singing the halals of God. Prepar they're worshiping Him. And then Yeshua, in verse fourteen, when he had found a young donkey, he sat on it, as it was written, "Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king comes sitting on a donkey's colt." Hmm. What have you got on yours? I mean, not unlike that. It says, "Daughter of Zion, do not be afraid. Watch, your king is coming." You will find him seated on the colt of a donkey. On a colt of a donkey. Okay, mm -hmm. let's flip real quick to Luke chapter 19, okay. 28. You're gonna, uh, you're gonna, you're gonna see something here. Luke 19, <clears throat> verses 28 to 31. Can you read that? Okay. Uh, in verse 28. When he finished the parable, he pushed onward, climbing the steep hills towards Jerusalem. He approached the towns of Bethphage and Beth Bethany, which are near Mount Oliviet. He sent two of the disciples ahead. Go to the next village, and when you enter, you will find a colt tied, a colt that has never been ridden before. Untie it and bring it here. 31. If anyone asks you why you're untying it, just say, the Lord needs it. Interesting. Okay, so that's that. That's Luke. Go to Mark eleven, 
Okay, and uh, read uh, verses 1 to 5. So Mark 11, verses 1 to 5. Right. And when they had gotten close to Jerusalem, near the two villages of Bethphage and, and Bethany and the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his followers ahead of them. Verses 1 to 5. 5, sorry. Um, Go to that village over there. And as soon as you get into the town, you'll see a young colt tied, a young colt tied that nobody has ever written, ridden. Untie it and bring it back to me. If anybody stops you and asks what you're doing, just say, the Lord needs it. And he will send it back right after he's done. Okay, and, and so when you read through that, uh, if you went to Matthew 21, verses 1 to 5, it's going to read the same way. So in all the Gospels, it pretty well reads the same way. I'm going to bring, the, bring, the, bring it back to me here. Okay, okay, all right. All right, are you ready for this? Okay. The people in, in, who are in captivity at that time, I don't know if you're in captivity. Are you in captivity right now with this COVID-19 and pandemic and everything else? Do you feel like you're captive? Well, so did the children of Israel or the people in Jerusalem at that time because they were in captive because of the Romans. And the Romans were, 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 uh, were, they were just taking heavy taxes and they were making life just miserable for everybody. It was hard to make a living. Is it hard to make a living right now? So they already, they knew that uh, based on the festival of dedication and lights and triumph and miracles that we just read in uh, Acts, uh, pardon me, in, in John chapter 10, verses 24 to 28, uh, right to 30, there was something there in the Feast of Dedication that was jumping out, that his righteousness goes before, and his rear is, his glory is his rear guard, that we read in uh, Isaiah 58, mm-hmm. uh, verses 8, 9, and 10. So, okay, let's just take a look. So, going into the uh, the triumph, triumphal entry into Jerusalem, the righteousness was going in, Okay, Jesus was the righteousness going into a place of darkness. But, it, but they were wanting Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, you know, the king of Israel. Okay, they, they were wanting him to conquer the enemy the same way as the Maccabees had done. Ah, interesting. So Jesus says, no, 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 no. Okay, disciples, let's get this thing preparation right. That's preparation holiness. You're going to go to this other village that's not in Jerusalem. And you're going to find a colt of a donkey tied somewhere. I want you to go get this colt of a donkey that has never been ridden. See, see, a donkey or a burro, um, only the most wealthy of the wealthy would have one of these donkeys back then. Like they were like if a Hummer today. How many people do you see driving around in a Hummer? Like they're worth about $150,000 or Hundred, they're worth a lot of money. Well, that, that in, in dollars, a, a donkey or a burrow would have been that way. So isn't it interesting that Joseph had a burrow that brought Mary in the census, you know, you know to the census uh, that was called at that time to the town of Bethlehem from where? From the tribe of Judah, uh, from Nazareth. So isn't that interesting that he had a burrow and he was that wealthy a man that had all that substance that this pregnant woman Okay, rode 90 miles on a, it wasn't a Hummer, it was a burrow. And you know, you know something? The glory of the Lord God was on, on top of the burrow. Do you think the ride would have been okay? I want you to know that when John the Baptist and Elizabeth and Mary and Jesus crossed, the, the, the spirit of the living God jumped. I want you to know that burrow was was positioned and put in place from the beginning of time to bring the glory of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, sitting inside Mary to Bethlehem. Do you think it was a coincidence that God took that burrow? All right, so it was one of the most expensive things. Okay, what are you talking about? That's a hummer, humdinger of a story, right? That's a humdinger of a story. Interesting. Well, I want you to know there was a brewer before that talked. What was his name? Uh, Balaam or something? Hmm. Hey, wasn't it Balaam that uh, that the angel, he saw the angels and did everything else, and and he was protecting his master? Interesting. That I think that burrow is worth over a million bucks. Not only could it ride, 
and do everything right. He could see, had spiritual sight, and had wisdom to protect his master. And talk to boot. And talk to boot. I mean, that was a real talking, talking burrow. Okay, so a donkey. All right, so let's just take this a little further. So Jesus says, I want you to find a burrow what's worth a million, million dollars that's just had a colt that's worth millions of dollars and it's never been ridden by the purposes of man. And this young colt, based on the, as we read the prophecy there, from the prophecy that the Messiah was going to be come in by a colt that's never been ridden. It's going to be a new thing. It's going to be a new thing brought in and it's never going to be the same. Carrying the glory of God. The wealth of heaven is being brought into Jerusalem. Being brought into the world by this cult that's never been ridden. You can't ride, you can't ride what man has got right now. God is giving you a brand new cult that you've got to have faith and you've got to believe that this new cult this new thing that God is doing in this new time of this great harvest, you have to be on the new thing of this little cult in order to be in the place where righteousness goes in and glory is your rear guard because that's what the Lord has chosen. You can't do it the way you've done it before. You can't use an old Hummer or an old... Uh, way of doing things or anointing you can't put old, new wine into old wineskins it's got it's a new thing it's a new crossover it's a, it's the glory of god the glory carriers just like that little cult it was the glory that brought the glory of the lord jesus christ into the triumphal entry to the fulfillment of the prophecy of of yeshua coming as the messiah not the way the maccabees did it but the way jesus is going to do it and he's going to do it now and he's, he's giving us a new way of transportation. This new cult has never been ridden. It is coming and it, we need to get on that ride. We need to get on that cult. We need to get on that prophetic anointing, that prophetic word that's going to take us in to the promised land. I hope you're getting this. This is a new thing. As it says, in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 9. Do you not, do you not, it says, I am doing a new thing. Do you not perceive what I'm doing? I am doing a new thing, says the Lord. This is a, this is a, this is a new thing that I am doing. I'm giving you a new cult. I am, I am that new wind of God that's coming in through the Holy Spirit. We need to, we need to be receptive to the new thing. Because Yeshua HaMashiach the Messiah is coming, the anointed one. Hallelujah. The anointed one is coming. And if you are going to be blind and religious, I want you to know when Saul was the religious leader and was on his way to Damascus on the Damascus road and he met the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It said that he he and every person fell down and he was blinded. That's what it says in scripture. He was blinded physically so that he can see personally. Spiritually. Spiritually. And in that spiritual, and I'm saying that, um, he said, to, he said, who is, <laughs> Jesus said, I am the one that you've been persecuting, right? You know what the picture that I got and, and, the, and the dream and the vision that I got with this thing, the colt was still standing that he went on. It wasn't knocked over. Because he was riding the colt. He, was, he stole the colt that Jesus went in with the triumphal entry. And the religious spirit, he took that colt as his own prize. Is I am going to be the king. I am going to ride on the king that on the cult that the king of Israel was supposed to be and I am going to be that king that's what the Lord showed me prophetically and that little cult it never fell down in the power of God because that little cult brought Saul to the feet of Jesus so that he could see spiritually so whatever your ride is it's going to take you to the foot 
to the feet of Jesus. So if you're blinded naturally, you'll see spiritually. So get ready to repent. I hope you know the ride that you're on is the one that God has chosen. What would God do? And what are you going to do? What is your ride going to be? So bless you. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord give you mercy. And let his light, the light, the light, the glory and the light shine upon you every morning. And the Lord God, thy peace be with you and surround you and give you that peace. As we are coming this last day of Hanukkah, but coming into the, you know, the like the festival of lights and all those things. But Jesus is our light. He's the light on that hill that Leslie read in John chapter 8, verse 12. Let Jesus be the light in your house, on top of your roof. Sing the song. He is the light of the world. He doesn't want you to be a dead shell or mostly dead shell. He wants you lit up. That's your choice. And how he brings you to his feet by whatever vehicle. And if it is a cult that was chosen by God to bring the king of kings in to Jerusalem to be sacrificed for, for you and I, he will use that same cult to take you and your pride to his feet for you to repent and to know that he is King of Kings, Lord of Lords. So bless you in this holiday season. We love you very much. And so does Jesus. Until we see you again. Bless you. <laughs>